Having the flexibility to write custom software, you're, you're bounded only by your imagination, what you can do. So we're down here in North Geelong at Octane Alley and we've got Tyrone from Motorsport Electronics. Now, it just looks like, well, from a distance, any other sort of small block V8, but it's quite different, isn't it, mate? Yeah, well, it's, um, it's a 392 or 393 cube Clevo LPG, liquid injection. Liquid and injection. petrol. Yeah. And petrol. So just like the last of the FG Falcons, which were liquid injection, this is running um, a full liquid injection system and it's got a full gasoline system as well. So, so these are Ford injectors? They're the, they're the largest uh, liquid injectors that you can get from a company called Viali in the Netherlands um, and they were the supplier for, for the Ford Falcon. Yeah, so they're exactly Falcon injectors and these are the um, like a universal rail um, holder that Viali make and then there's some small little pipes that go into nozzles down into the rail. You might see those little brass nozzles that are drilled and tapped into the rail. So just to back it up a little bit, I mean, in today's day and age, most people would just run, I guess, a flex fuel E85 type setup. So they could run 98 and E85. So why, obviously this is the customer was after LPG? Yes, the customer was after LPG. He's had a long history of um, LPG performance cars, big bang of V8s and always running like a gas research carby. And, you know, the, if you do that these days with a cost of gas, it's, it's worse than petrol because gas and petrol are much, much closer in price and they tend to be quite um, inaccurate with fueling and, you know, highway driving. Yeah. So he wants to do, you know, 25, 30,000 Ks a year. And he thought, well, I just want to continue on with LPG, but made an inquiry to uh, a guy I do some work with, uh, Jim Zabo. He's a bit of an oracle in the gas industry and approached him about designing a, a liquid injection system being state of the art because you get a vol F benefit from the, the cool gas getting injected just like we did on Falcon. Yeah, so that's where it started. Um, it probably wouldn't be anyone's first choice and I took it on because, you know, you know me, I like a technical challenge. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I guess one of the first issues is you don't have the choice, do you, in injector sizing? And you're very limited, aren't you? You're very limited. And that's the biggest ones we've got. Um, so pretty much for anything performance, you'd be running those ones straight yeah. up. And if you need more performance, you need more injectors. Mm. So we did look at going 16 gas injectors because we can only do on cold weather, 520 to 530 horsepower on LPG only. And on hot weather, maybe 580. And the engine was targeting 600 to 650, you know, 620 to 650 horsepower. So we debated whether going 16 injectors was worth it, but you, you struggle with a, it's an M150 ECU. So we've got 16 drivers in there essentially. If we ran, they're peak and hold injectors. So they pull, they pull six amps to open and three amps to hold. So that's like the big indie style injector. So to run yep. two of them in parallel at high RPM, you could end up with an injector driver heat dissipation issue and so bringing the temp of the ECU up, because that is a factor with a lot of, um, you know, a lot if you double up peak and hold injectors on the one driver. So we decided that just go with the eight injectors that covers, you know, 80 odd percent of the engine's range and then just top it up with, with gasoline, because we were going to have a gasoline injection system anyway. Well, considering LPG is not as prominent as it used to be. That's here, exactly so right. I having remember, petrol make is a smart choice. Yeah. At BA um, single fuel time, there was 3,500 service stations with gas. Yeah. I think it's under 2,000 now yeah. Australia wide. So. Well, gas will always be around for, you know, certainly in my lifetime, I would think, but um, it's, the it's incent certainly The incentive decline, isn't there so. to run it as much. I mean, yeah, like when you and I got our license gas, the difference between gas and petrol was enormous yeah. price, wasn't it? And two things because of that, like petrol cars become so much better, like mm. fuel efficiency is Absolutely. much more of a focus. Yeah, yeah. All the modern DI cars, which pretty much everything, anything that's turbo is pretty much direct injection now, all the Commodores, the problem is there's no real proven gas system for direct injection for doing an aftermarket conversion. So this is, that's where there's a gap in technology. So the vehicle technology is gone, continue to climb and gas technology is flat. Like Viali is working on a, um, a smaller 
DI system, but it's not the the cost is you know the payback period is like. Seven I guess years. certainly in Australia, like gas sort of was almost for a while that it was phased out and diesel sort of yeah that's took right over and for years, didn't it? Gas is essentially a byproduct of the refining mm, process, absolutely. right? So back in the day, they used to it used to be whatever they could get for it, but then with it, um, it got excise twelve and a half cents excise added to it, and it's just pushed the cost of gas up and. It's, it, gas is still cheaper than petrol in a sense per kilometre, but when you factor in the cost of the conversion and liquid injection is a lot more expensive than the old vapours mixer system. So the like for a Land Cruiser or um, an F truck, something that burns a hell of a lot of fuel, it's still very worthwhile. But um, for smaller, or less kilometres, less than say 20,000 a year, you wouldn't even think about it. But there's LPG still use a lot of the Uber drivers with hybrid Camrys. For instance, Jim does a lot of conversions yeah. on hybrid Camrys because they still save, you know, 25, 30% cost over their fuel bills. So for someone like an Uber driver, it, it still makes sense, which, which surprised me. So getting back to this, do you want to run through what's. Yeah, going so essentially on here? we've got a conventional style LPG tank, the big cylindrical, it's a 72 litre tank with a. The difference with this one is it's got a pump internal. That pumps high pressure liquid up to um, 3000 kPa, which is um, pretty much 400 psi is the highest tank pressure. It's typically between 100 and 400 psi based off temperature. Now, people with familiar with gas would think of a gas converter, which had the coolant going through and yep. that would turn the gas, the liquid into vapor. Well, this is a purely liquid system. So these just become fuel pressure regulators. So this is just a LPG liquid version of your normal, um, you know, aftermarket fuel pressure reg. So that's what these are doing. They've got a supply line going into the rail. So we feed each rail at one end and then the return line goes back to the um, regulator and back into the tank. Okay. So it's just like a normal petrol liquid system. We have to use two converters because one's good for about 250 kilowatts and this is, uh, you know, 450. So we struggled with um, with flowing enough gas with one converter. So And this is going into an old school? It's going Falcon. in an older school Falcon, yeah. So a um, bit, bit of a showy thing and uh, it's got a car computer and all that sort of stuff in it. So it's a bit sort of uh, a bit of a high tech sort of take on an, on an old classic. Yeah, absolutely. So. And tell us a bit about this manifold. It's, um... So the manifold is it's all, like the heads are 225 um, CNC CHI heads. Like, you know, they're pretty much the best you can get for a Clevo. We've got a high rise single plane manifold and we had this made by Sullivan in the US to take a twin 67 mil Cobra Jet Mustang throttle body. I think it's like a, it's an S197 era Mustang. So that's the previous generation Mustang Cobra throttle body. Um, that's the a twin 67 is the area required to make the, that 650, 670. That's the sort of airflow I wanted. Um, we went to Sullivan for this because this was the, uh, we, the, the customer wanted it. It's a high rise intake manifold. So the customer wanted to fit under the bonnet. We wanted to go drive by wire. So a four barrel with a linkage and all that sort of stuff was, and an actuator was sort of out of the question. So this is a proven drive by wire, OE style drive by wire. And this didn't give us any uh, flow losses into the manifold. So it was good enough for 650 horsepower. Like if we were making 700, we'd probably see a couple of percent loss through it. But for the power target we were chasing, Sullivan were great to work with. So. Yeah, so the manifold has just been drilled for the normal fuel rail. So we fabricated some fuel rail brackets and just to take norm, I think the 660cc injectors, just running 98 pulp. And then we fabricated all these brackets to carry the LPG system. It's, we tried to make it look OE, that's sort of my focus. We've all got the manifold drilled on the other side for a map sensor. So um, in the, essentially this recess here, we've got the T map sensor, you know, the. Commodore or a Falcon style Bosch sensor. We're running closed loop Lambda on both banks. We've converted to LS coils, um, the little CNC template to be able to drill the, the rocker covers, try it once again. So we can use factory LS coil leads and it just looks a bit more modern in the engine bay. We're running a, a, an MSD Hall effect um, synchronizer to get our one pulse per cam rev. And we make a bracket now for crank trigger. We do a 36 minus one bolt on tone wheel for a Clevo with a bracket 
to take a, just an off the shelf crank angle sensor. So it's a bulletproof, robust OE style solution. We've got the normal sensors, of course, we've got fuel pressure, we've got oil temperature, oil pressure. So we've got oil pressure protection in the engine so that if the oil pressure drops, it limits the RPM for the available oil pressure. Temperature, we've got temperature protection. So if he wants to do a track day, it will protect the engine oil from going super thin and overheating. We've got fuel pressure in the LPG rail, fuel pressure in the, and temperature, sorry, in the LPG rail, which we need to calculate the density of the fuel and know if there's any vapor in the, in the fuel line because vapor can't be metered. We, yes. We, all the injectors are metering, the opening time's based on um, metering liquid and the vapor is one two. 270th of the mass of uh, the, the liquid. So if you have any vapor in the line, you just end up with a misfire, a lean misfire. So so it's a typical, like an, there's nothing fancy about the engine. Like a, there's a lot of tough three, you know, 351, 393, 408 clevos. It's just Cali's bottom end, 11 and a half to one comp, just a good stout, reliable yeah. factory four bolt American block clevo, you know, with topped with a good set of CHI heads, roller rockers, 248 at 50 cam, about 640 or 650 lift. It idles at a thousand. It's got good, it's got, you know, close to 400 foot pounds at 1500. And uh, yeah, it'll be a nice streetable combo. I used a Motec M1 um, for the flexibility of being able to write custom software, custom control software. We had to do a lot of it development. And this is sort of our thing. We, there's no off the shelf solution for this. So I sort of spoke, like I've worked a lot in the OE field with LPG for, um, over the years, like since 99 for single fuel Falcon. And yeah, just knowing about LPG and the limitations of like LPG liquid in Australia is a challenge because we're in a, a, a temperate climate. So the, the liquid wants to be a vapor. Yeah. So you've got to ha put a lot of things in place to make sure we don't get vapor in the rails. We purge it out. And so to be able to do that, we start up on petrol. We then, depending on the tank temperature or the fuel temperature, if it's cold, we only have to purge seven seconds and we, we've got the vapor out. If it's if it's after a hot soak and you've you know driven to central New South Wales or Victoria and it's like a 45 degree day, when we swap across from petrol to LPG or when we start from petrol, we then take 30 seconds to purge the line running the pump because it's a duty cycle controlled pump for LPG and for petrol. So yeah, we purge the line out and off we go and we just transition from petrol, we wind the ramp the petrol injectors down over a second and ramp the LPG injectors in. And you know, I think you'll see on the video, it's absolutely seamless, like you don't even know. And idle is probably the worst case because the engine load is the lowest. So any perturbation in the fueling, we'll, you'll see it straight away and the engine's just rock solid. So and you can do it at 3000 wide open, 5000 wide open. You can swap over to fuels regardless. Um, this is a normal style, as you'd be familiar, LPG tank. This is the valve body. Most LPG tanks don't have a pump in them, but because this is liquid injection, it has a, essentially like an EFI turbine pump inside the tank to raise the pressure by 500 kPa so that you've got a return system because you've got to have the fuel pressure higher than the tank pressure to get the fuel to want to come back to the tank. Otherwise, it doesn't want to go back in. That's the lock-off solenoid. So that's the safety solenoid. And there's also one on the um, pressure regulator as well so that when the engine's not got LPG selected or not turning, it locks off the gas so that there's no um, flow of gas. Yep. We've got a pressure temperature sensor, a pressure sensor, a temperature sensor so that we can do that composite composition calculation as I talked about. That's the fill line and the level gauge is in there. So we've got a litre by litre calibrated level gauge. So it's super, super accurate. And um, yeah, that's all like a Viali production Falcon style valve body, but modified what we've, Jim's drilled all the passages out to make it a, um, a high flow, 650 odd horsepower capable um, LPG delivery system. So that was, it was a fair bit of development in that. Um, Jim and I worked to minimize the restrictions and then we put it on and we have more restrictions. So we'd look at where the restriction was and do pressure tappings across to find out where the restriction actually was limiting uh, our flow rate. So we got there in the end, but, and we've, Ignore the uh, the wiring, but uh, there's a bit of uh, there's two dual um, dual half bridge drivers from Motec to be able to pulse width modulate each pump, and uh, that's essentially as it will be in the car. I've made the harness so that I like to test 
on the dyno exactly as it is in the car. Yeah, so that's yep. the wiring harness that's running in the car, the car. And we'll just shorten it by four foot when we put it into the vehicle. So it's all, I know that when I put it in the car, it'll go. So essentially we're LPG and petrol. For maximum performance, we can run an LPG and then above a certain horsepower level, we add some additional petrol. And we've created some custom software, which is like a state machine. So we have several different states of fuel. LPG normal means that we've got petrol available so that we can go to the 500 odd horsepower that the LPG injectors allow. And then we add some gasoline on top. Um, we then can, so that's controlled by the switch here. We can then switch across, that's an LPG to petrol transition. We're now running on petrol. You didn't hear any difference in the engine mode at idle. Uh, not at all. That's, idle's the worst case because the engine load is so low that any change in fueling will will Im impact the, um, the idle. So when you look here, now we've got the switch selected to petrol. If we then, um, we're now in priming the LPG system to remove all the vapor, and then we do a transition, petrol to LPG, and now we're back on LPG. So we're running on LPG and then instantly back to petrol. So it's about a one second transition time to ramp one fuel out and ramp the other fuel in. Yeah, so let's do a curve and uh, we'll run petrol, uh, we'll run LPG and petrol. So this so, is- So this will be only LPG? This will be LPG with petrol. So this is a full performance mode. So yep. we've got five pedal maps. We're at pedal map number five, which yep. is ludicrous. And uh, we- But the petrol doesn't come in until- Until about five grand yep. under wide open throttle okay. conditions. And at peak power, we're running about 35% um, petrol yep. and 65% LPG, because the LPG injectors are up at about 85% duty cycle up there. But um, we'll talk about that later with the tanks, but essentially depending on the tank pressure, which is a function of the temperature, we're in winter now, so the tank pressure is 630 kPa, and the rail pressure is 1150 kPa. So with the, the rail pressure is always 500 kPa higher with the gas. What happens when the, on a 45 degree day, everything moves up 600. So suddenly you can flow a lot more with the injector. So summer is the, is you get 580 out of the injectors. Yeah. So this is LPG plus petrol. So essentially normal operation. So 657, 490. Peak torque was around 575, say, at 5350 RPM. So that's pretty stout for what's essentially a 393 cube sweep car. You'll see the benefit in a minute. That's LPG and petrol. LPG liquid going in, um, as it goes from liquid to vapor in the manifold, it causes a charge cooling, sometimes up to 20, 25 degrees C and it changes the vol f so we've got a different vol f table for lpg and petrol and we blend between the two depending on how much petrol we're adding and it, you'll see it's probably going to be six or ten horsepower less for straight 98 fuel so the yeah, thing's okay. 11 and a half yep. to one comp yep. so we'll do a, a petrol only run we'll switch across to petrol so we're currently running on petrol There you go. So that's 10, 10 horsepower. horsepower because the Vol F is uh, not quite as good because the, we're not getting the charge cooling and the denser um, cylinder fill that we get from having the LPG liquid as well as the gasoline. So um, does LPG, does it actually have an octane? Yeah, so LPG is funny because you, you, it's a bit like a box of chocolates. You don't know yeah. what you're going to get. So. Yeah. Um, in winter, the winter mix is much closer to 100% 100 propane. So 100% propane is like 103, 105 RON, it's quite knock resistant. Um, butane is less knock resistant, it's about 93, 94 RON. Um, in summer, they try and get rid of the butane because it's, it's essentially a byproduct of the petroleum um, refining process. So you end up with 40% butane in summer because butane is not very winter friendly. 
it doesn't it's it's uh, boiling points like seven degrees so below seven degrees it's very hard to vaporize it okay so in winter you end up with 100 percent propane that's the that's the go mix in summer you end up with like 40 percent butane which is less the go mix so we've got a sensor in the tank we've got pressure and temperature in the tank and i've programmed some software that we've got the saturation curves of propane and butane yeah. so by measuring the tank pressure and the tank temperature we can interpolate and make an estimation of what the mix in the tank is and we then blend between a butane spark table and a propane spark table so that way we've got the spark covered so you can see or with the petrol curve you would saw like a delta between the lpg and petrol down low with the lpg we are able to run about two or three degrees more spark um, and we get the charge cooling as well so it's it's definitely a, a good fuel from a performance point of view yeah. so essentially because we use petrol at high rpm also um, one of the benefits of doing that is you minimize the valve recession like lpg is often known for valve recession and from my oe background working on a large four liter lpg engine valve recession is the worst at higher rpm so by injecting some fuel above five grand we also mitigate being a solid roller cam how frequently he's got to have the rocket covers off and yeah. do valve clearances you know we're probably not the only um person who's ever put lpg with petrol supplement fueling but we've made this bulletproof so because we're relying on the petrol to make up some of the fuel if we ran out of petrol in the tank or the pump failed or something like that we would then have a lean out condition yeah, of high yeah, of course, rpm yeah, yeah. so we have i've written some strategies so that we have a fuel level sensor and we look at the rail pressure for petrol if either of those drop off or the sensor fails goes into diagnostics we then inhibit the petrol so that petrol can't be selected and then we go to a different pedal map which limits the throttle to the maximum duty cycle of the uh of the injectors so it'll make cold weather like today eight degrees c we should be able to make a bit over 500 and on a 45 degree day we could make 580 with the same injectors just because we've got higher tank pressure so um yeah we're limited by that um tank pressure plus 500 kpa that the lpg liquid system works at so i'll just ascent because we haven't got the level sensor connected i'll just fake the level sensor so if we said the low level was 45 liters um we're now inhibiting petrol and our fuel state has changed to lpg with petrol inhibited so that then introduces a custom throttle limit based on um, we've calibrated that based on tank pressure and um, and engine rpm so we if we've got low tank pressure we limit the throttle more than if we have high tank pressure available So we're LPG only now with no petrol and throttle limiting to clip the power to be safe. So you can see through here we've got the extra torque of LPG because it's not limited at all there. And from five grand, we start to fall in a hole because we're limited. Yeah. We made 522 and on LPG. And that's just solely because the injectors. That's lower. injectors that's you know, close to 90% duty. So yeah. 80, 87%, yeah. I think I clipped them out at. So that's where we're maxed out on injector duty cycle. So um, it's still a very drivable engine. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, below five grand, the customer just, wouldn't, you wouldn't know the, the difference. difference. Would that's right. But we've protected the engine. He can still get home with no petrol. Um, and the start would be on LPG as well. So I can show you uh, an LPG only start because normally we start with petrol and then swap over after between seven and 30 seconds, depending on the rail temperature. So that's an LPG start. So a little bit of a longer crank, but uh, yeah, it still does the job. So if you look here, like yeah. um, the torque curve for the magenta line is LPG only. The yellow line is LPG plus petrol. So you can see up until just before five grand, they're bang on. So if you're on LPG only, the customer wouldn't know. It'll pretty much 47.50. The peak torque's around 550 for um, LPG only. But for LPG plus petrol, the peak torque's up around nearly 580 newton uh, foot-pounds, yeah, yeah. which is a hell of a lot. Like it's The um, biggest difference, though, is probably down here, isn't it? 
yeah, down here. So this is petrol only, and this is LPG operation. You can see the massive area that you get down low because we're sort of knock limited by spark through here with 98 because we are running a lot of comp. Yeah, we're typically, the air fuel ratios are all pretty much the same, about 0 0.8, 4, 0.86 for most of the run. Hey, yeah. if you're talking Lambda, no one's going to... Uh... <laughs> Real tuners talking Lambda. I know. <laughs> I've been, so, uh, I've been but, corrupted by too many... Not under, you know, I used to only understand Lambda, and then I got yeah. hanging around too many V8 people, and everything's there. Well, this is a perfect example yeah, of yeah. why talking in Lambda is yeah. correct, because right, yeah. the, air, the stoic air-fuel ratio for LPG is 15.5. Mm -hmm. The stoic air fuel ratio for gasoline is 14.65 with modern fuels and 14.6 with 98 RON, closer to 14.6. So if we said, you know, it's 14.5 or 12.5 air fuel ratio, that's not true for gas. So if yes. we talk in lambda, lambda is the same independent of yes, petrol. Absolutely. So 0.8 lambda mm -hmm. is 0.8 lambda on LPG, LPG. diesel, yep. whatever. You're not the first person who said that to me. That's why, you know, really fuel strategies in the ECU and tuners should talk in Lambda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a stickler for that. This is the Motec M1 build software. So I have a build development license and can write custom firmware. The Motec make a very comprehensive bunch of packages. There's a GPA for non-traction and launch road car type applications. There's the GPR, which is a race-based package with traction and launch and um, gear um, change ignition cut for sequential shifts and culture shifting. There's the paddle shift packages, there's um, packages tailored to diesel. So all those off the shelf, what they call general purpose packages are really, really versatile and um, will suit 90 or 95% yeah, yeah. of most applications, right? Yeah. But we've got something that's very custom here. We've got two discrete fuel systems. We've got a blend from one fuel to the other. Now the MoTeC GPA and GPR packages have a, a dual fuel system, like essentially it's running say petrol and E85 or two different petrols or diff secondary injectors. But what we wanted was to be able to interlock the system as well against if you run out of petrol, you don't get a lean out with LPG, you want to be able to blend across. So I had to write a whole lot of uh, custom software to do that. And essentially I started off with a GPR package and just essentially added another 15% code to um, just generate um, all the control that we require for the duty cycle control petrol pumps and LPG pumps because when, we, when we're running on LPG, the petrol pump's just idling along at 20% keeping pressure in the rail so we can swap to petrol straight away. And similarly with the LPG, when we go from petrol to LPG, we have to prime the vapor out of the rail because we yeah, can't meter yeah. through the injector the vapor because mm -hmm. it's one two hundred and seventieth of the mass of mm. of um, liquid. So we're we're metering on liquid, but if we have vapor go through, they end up with a misfire and a lean. Yeah, lean like spike. you said, you often see the people having issues starting an LPG car. Yeah, because. Yeah. To be able to provide a smooth switchover where when we're on petrol or when we're starting, we start on petrol. So that all had to be written custom custom software. So it's it's a very versatile package and I can just be sitting here. I wrote most of it um, at home in the lounge room and just after doing some initial work with, with a prototype package that I built, I'd go away and work out what other features I needed and then I would build a, build a package come down to the dyno and validate and test it. So that's our specialty, doing engine development, um, custom firmware, rather there's more than just mapping an engine, that's not engine development. Engine yeah. development is going through validating new software, validating engine packages and absolutely getting the best out of it, cam timing and all that sort of stuff. But so the flexibility of the build package means that I can be sitting here and I realize, well, hang on, I'd like this table to be out, like I'd like to have a different vol F table and blend between the two for LPG and petrol because initially I wanted to use the, the, the one vol F table, but when on LPG, because of that charge cooling effect, the vol F changes up to 25% at some throttle openings. So then I just wrote a, another bit of software just sitting here to shut the engine down, grab a coffee, spend 15, 20 minutes coding up a bit of software, um, compiling it, which takes almost as long as writing it. <laughs> and then pushing it in, copying my cal across, and we were ready to go. 
it's very much a tree structure. So if anyone who's familiar with programming or um, even like your, your folders in Windows, you've got a tree structure for all the filters. So in LPG, I've created uh, a few extra features and we've got like a throttle limit for when we're on LPG. So that's, that's just a table essentially of tank pressure and RPM. And then we've got tank level and pressure. So we've got a fully customizable table so we can tailor the, uh, the gauge to be liter by liter accurate. We measure the prank, uh, tank pressure and temperature and we do a calculation for the composition. So essentially, we have a calculation. We measure the tank pressure and temperature. That's just some equations and a bit of code. So you're, you know, like an E85, yep. you've got a flex fuel sensor. Yep. You're doing sort of the same thing via the line pressure? Yeah, the line pressure, or the, the tank pressure and tank temperature. So when okay. the tank's in its natural state, yep. it's somewhere between the saturated pressure of butane mm -hmm. and the saturated pressure of propane. And we look at what the temperature is and what the pressure is. I have an equation for the saturation pressures of both of those, and then I interpolate between how my, and work out, you know, it's essentially a linear interpolation. Okay. So I've got a lot of assistance with that from yeah. um, uh, pretty much the oracle of LPG industry in Australia, like Jim Zabo. So he's um, had a lot of work with the factory LPG Falcon. Um, he's essentially the oracle for LPG tanks and LPG property. So um, been in the industry for t over 20 years. So by using his um, information, I was able to code that and we've essentially got a composition gauge. So then by knowing that butane's 93, 94 Ron, propane's 103 to 105 Ron, summer mix you get one much more propane so what we do is we have two spark tables and by measuring the composition in the tank we can or estimating with plus or minus five percent we can then scale the spark to suit whatever lpg composition we've got and then we also modify that if we're on um, petrol we've got a third spark table for gasoline as well which it has its normal compensations for engine temp intake charge temp so you know you get a little bit of spark out on those stinking hot dry days some e85 cars a lot of cars in the ford stable now don't run an e85 sensor yeah. flex fuel sensor they essentially look at the long-term trim and compare that to the short-term trim yeah. and they know um, we can do a calculation in certain speed and loads where we can uh, um, infer what the percentage ethanol is by the amount of fuel we're adding to get to stoic yep. compared to we would be at gasoline and we would be at 100%. Um, so then we can infer we do a linear interpolation as well. So software is very, very smart. A lot of manufacturers nowadays, like a lot of cars don't have an oil temp sensor mm. because they're interpolating the oil temp from a model, which is you know very, very accurate. I used to do a fair bit of that work. We've also got an interesting feature in this car because the customer requested it because uh, he's going to have a large android style tesla appearance type tablet a car computer in the car he wanted to be able to broadcast all the information out on obd so i've written some code with the assistance of motec to generate signals and send them out on o as obd channels so we can read them through any bluetooth dongle but uh, one of the nice things that i suggested was a bugatti veyron's got an engine power meter so what we've done what i've done is built a a power calculation feature. So we map the engine at a standard air fuel ratio and MBT spark, so the best spark. We then built a table of manifold pressure because engine output, like load, is very much um, proportional to manifold pressure. So at any speed and load point, we know what the torque is from the dyno. We then correct that for lambda, um, how much retard, like if we've got spark retard for temperature or we've got it running a different lambda value, We've programmed in some curves that correct for that, just like in an OE computer. Um, we also correct for barometric pressure. So if you go a thousand meters up, you probably lose 10%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we also look at oil temperature. I just put a little bit of a uh, modifier on there because with en uh, cold engine oil, you end up with more engine friction. So it's a sort of a bit of a linear interpolation. Once the engine's warm, it's within four to 5% of what we're reading on the dyno. So the idea is that on the big tablet, we'll have a large gauge, which will just be engine power meter, lack of Aeron. So I've never seen an engine package that's ever had that done before, but it works yeah. so effectively. This is the second or third time I've that's done cool it. Ways. Yeah, and I've got a yeah. Focus RS, and it spits all the torque information out on the CAN bus. So I just made my Motec dash 
read all that yep. information. And Mustang, I've done one for Mustang, so you can just read the, the, the very accurate factory torque signal and um, convert it to a power. power signal. It's a bit of a wow factor. Yeah, that's cool. doesn't serve any useful yeah. purpose, but like so much in cars, some of it's just for wow and, and uh, yeah, it doesn't add to the performance. So we're just demonstrating the power meter feature. It's just like, a, as I said before, a little bit of a nice um, wow factor, surprise and delight for the customer. So we've put in a map. So if we, uh, this is 2000, what, 2200 RPM. We're reading 211 horsepower there and we're reading 208 off the engine, calculated from the torque map. We'll bring it up a bit. 305 versus 308, 309. So as you can see, it's quite a nice thing. Like if we do a ramp run, you can see the gauge move up as uh, as we go up through the rev range, you'll see the gauge. So if that was in your car on the uh, centre console on a big tablet like a Tesla, or you know some sort of modern Veyron. It's very easy to do now with this sort of like having the flexibility to write custom software. You, you're you're bounded only by your imagination what you can do. So as I said, we have all the inhibits for different tank levels. We send a we do a little bit of a distance to empty calculation for the customer as well because um, we've got very accurately modelled injectors. So we've got all the functionality of, all the of cool a late model car. All the cool stuff you like in a late model car, yeah. Yeah, in a retro thing. And yeah. it's, gonna, it's got cruise control as well. So Motec have just introduced cruise control in the GPR package. So I've pulled that into our custom, custom package. And uh, yeah, as I said, we're spinning all the data out on an OBD format so we can read that with a, with a dongle and transmit it to a phone or something like that. So um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of sort of novelty you can add, especially if it's something like a show car, and you incorporate it with a with a color Motec dash. You could have retro graphics and a lot. It, you can add a lot of pizzazz and uh, and uniqueness to a car just with software. <laughs>